simply telling you to make known your voice unto God. You don't pray from the inside. You pray from the outside. If you need something from me, you must speak louder so that I can hear you. And if you want something from God, speak unto him. Amen. Tell him with your mouth. Lift your hands and pray. The blessing of the Lord is heavier than the curse of a man. Believe in God as the word of God is coming. Take a book. Take a pen. Write this vision on the table. Make it plain. Though it may tarry, it will come to pass. Amen. Believe in God. The God that is here is the same God who is right there. So I'm praying for you. That God will touch you. God will give you grace. God will give you understanding. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this word will come in power and in revelation. In Jesus' name, shout amen. Put your two hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I see your notebooks? Your notebooks, hurry up. Can I have four people just to come and take the blessing? Hurry up. Men, there must be men. Must be men. There must be men. Hurry up. Take the blessing there. Take the blessing. Take the blessing. Another one. To take a blessing. There was an exchange. Don't worry, son. Go, go, go there. It is well. It is well. Hey, come on. Rush. Hey, I say run. Another one there to take a blessing. Hurry up, hurry up. You know, every city there is an angel that is assigned. That's the reason the moment you move from your seat, another one comes to take your blessing. Are you listening? Hey, are you listening? Can you speak with your mouth? Are you listening? Uh -uh. Let the man sit here. Sit here. I've promoted you. This man writes all my notes. My God. Principle of following the anointing. Breaking generational curses. The love of God. Receiving the honor. Hmm. The divine instruction. The anointing. How must I receive the character of a believer. Understanding the prophetic ministry. Operating. Operating in the dynamis. Do not quench the anointing. Prayer and fasting. The lessons to learn. The good relationship. Types of faith. Wow. This is just amazing. Wow. Look at this. Look at that. Because of what you have done, writing my notes, see me in my office, I'll give you 5,000. <laughs> Only you. Only you, not you. <laughs> Just to write notes. Just to write notes. There is nothing that makes a prophet to be so much excited like when he sees people being educated or being empowered. Praise God. Because it is very dangerous to teach to wrong people. It's very. That's the reason Jesus said, do not cast that which is holy to what? To swine. Which means, if you're not very careful as a man of God, you can be giving revelation to people that cannot receive it. So I don't know whether these people are ready for my revelation. Let me first see your Bible. Huh. Some Bibles here. My 
like Jesus. Can I see your Bible? Hey, lift your Bible. your Bible. Clap hands for yourself. Can I teach you? I'm not, I don't, you know that I don't prophesy in this service. It's only about teaching. I don't want church members. I raise sons. And if you are not my son, you are someone's son. Hallelujah. So I raise sons. I empower people. I teach them deeper things of the supernatural. Now today I'm teaching about a cardinal topic that the Lord blessed me as I was uh, doing some things in, in, in Jobek. While we are driving, the Lord said, keep and address. And dress. That's the theme of my message. Keep and dress. Keep and dress. Keep and dress. Proverbs chapter number 18, verse 16. I want one of my pastors to read for me. Thank you, General, for allowing me to read the word of God in your presence. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16 reads, A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Again. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. And I want us to read Genesis chapter 2. Verse number 15. Praise God. I want you to get hold on those scriptures. Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 15. Are you there? Let's read. One, two, three, go. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Verse number 15, the Bible says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Proverbs chapter number 18, verse 16, the Bible says, The gift opens the way for the giver. And ushers him into the presence of great men. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Dress and keep. That's the theme of my message. Amen. Now, when we look at that point of scripture, Genesis chapter uh, number two, we see God Almighty. When he had created everything, the plants, the animals, the grass, the Bible says after he did all the creation, if you read Genesis chapter number two going down there, the Bible says that then this is the generation. Of the heavens and the earth when they were created. 
And the Bible says all these things were not in existence because there was no man to till the ground. Amen. No man to till the ground. And there was no dew from heaven. Rain. And the same scripture, we see God coming up with a plan. And that plan, it is to put man to be in charge of the garden. Amen. Amen. In charge of the garden. Now, I'm asking God, why didn't God put a lion there? But God had to put somebody who looked exactly like him. Talks like him. Walks like him. With a mind like him. And God had to put Adam in the garden. Now you must understand that the garden was created first. <laughs> oh, you don't understand. The garden was created first. So before God puts you into something, you first Begin the preparation. Amen. Amen. You know, hearing this. Amen. Amen. Before God brought me to South Africa, He first began to prepare. Amen. That's the reason God will not take you in some certain levels of wealth without empowering you. Amen. There is a process. Now, the Bible says God had first to create the garden. And there in the garden, there were all manner of things. There was gold, there was diamond, there was, there was uh, 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 everything that a man needed. Amen. And after God had prepared everything, the Bible says that's when he took a man and placed him there. Amen. Which means... In God's agenda, God does not want you to pray for money. God does not want you to pray for healing. Amen. God does not want you to pray for prosperity, but God has given you all things in the garden. Amen. You're not hearing this. Amen. When God placed Adam, the Bible says he did not lack anything. He did not lack anything. There are most of you, God has placed you in prophetic places. But because of your ignorance, you have come out of that place, you are looking for another place. I repeat again. God has prepared a place. The place of Adam is Eden. Amen. The garden of Eden. And the Bible says he was not lacking. God was the provider. Amen. He was having visitation. I want you to listen to me. Very vividly. He was having visitation every day. God could make an appointment in that place. There is a difference when you are making an appointment with God and God himself making an appointment with you. Amen. This time it was God coming and making an appointment with Adam just for, 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 for God to speak to Adam. To reveal who he is. Oh. How I wish if God can make an appointment with me. Every time when I, I must speak to God, I must make an appointment. God, I want to speak to you. Because there's protocol. Too much protocol in this God. But this time, it was God breaking protocol. He broke protocol and he came and met a man in that place that he placed him. There is a destined place that God wants you to be so that he must, he must speak to you. Amen. Now, after God placed Adam in the garden, the Bible says he gave him two laws. Number one, the law of dressing. Number two, the law of keeping. 
let's exploit on these two laws. The law of dressing and the law of keeping. God gave him the command. He said, Adam, I've not just placed you in this garden for the sake of you eating the fruits. You are not just a minister for the sake of dressing. I have not just placed you in this garden for the sake of you enjoying the comfort, enjoying the beauty. No. You were not employed in that company just to go and sit on the wonderful chair. Amen. There is something that you must do. So God is telling Adam, he said, Adam, listen to me. I have given you these two assignments. Number one is to dress and to keep. Now we are looking at the law of dressing or the principle of dressing. You must understand that God is in the position where he gives the garden as a gift to Adam. He gives the responsibility to Adam to take care of a gift. Listen, whatever God gives you, right, whatever God gives you is in a form of a gift. Repeat again, whatever God gives you, it is in a form of a gift. Amen. So the garden that is given to Adam, it is a gift from the Lord. God had to give the garden to Adam. He said, I will not take care of it. I've given you the responsibility. Amen. So which means God does not take care of things anymore. God does not protect because he has given us things as a gift and it must be an act to dress and to keep. Amen. So the garden is a gift and there in the garden Adam was a king. He was a king. He was given the Responsibility to name all the animals. And he was naming them every day. Naming them, naming them, naming them. And God was not opposing. Now, let's look at deep this word dressing. The word to dress, it's simply to pamper. Or to add from its original beauty. God when he gives you something. He wants you to multiply. <laughs> no here it is. He wants you to multiply. Not just to multiply but he wants you to dress it. To decorate it. So, the gift from the law, the Bible says, the gift of a man, I repeat again, the Bible says, the gift of a man, not the prayer. There are most of you who are too prayerful. You must understand something. The Bible did not say the prayer of a person or the qualification of a person. Amen. The Bible says the gift of a man. Amen. The gift of a man has the ability to create to create so it is not your documents that creates employment. We have too many qualified people that are dunderheads. They can't perform. They can't, they can't offer. Why must we employ them? Must we employ people who are qualified on the paper, yet they can't deliver? 
The Bible says the gift of a man shall create shall create a room for him which means your gift has the ability to introduce you amen don't know here this amen your gift has the ability to introduce you because most people when i'm talking about such kind of things you listen with your ears but your spirit don't listen the gift of a man shall create room for him amen not for my sake so your gift is a personal empowerment to your destiny the gift of a man shall create room for him and present him so the gift becomes like an MC. Before you appear, the MC begins to talk about you. He begins to talk about, he begins to announce you. John was the gift of the Messiah. John was the gift of the Messiah. The Bible says John is the voice. He's the gift of the Messiah introducing and crying in preparation. Amen. So before you appear, there must be an MC to introduce you, to give a, bi a biography of who you are, Amen. what you do, where you came from, what you have achieved. So the Bible says the gift of a man shall create room for him and present him before great men, not poor people. Not poor people. You are not hearing this. Amen. That's the reason if I tell you that you are not my friend, if you are poor, you are not my friend. Because my gift is not for all. If your gift attracts poor people, then suspect that gift. Because the Bible says the gift of a man, the endorsement, the endorsement of God through a man, it has the ability to open. In another way, your gift is a door opener. Amen. You will not enter in some places without a gift. You will not enter in some places without a gift. The gift introduces you. The gift announces you. Oh, Jesus. So, remember that whatever God gives you is in a form of a what? Of a gift. Say gift. gift. Your money is a gift. Amen. Let's talk about money. Yes. Money. Money. That's the reason you are, in, you are in poverty. Because you have not developed an act of keeping and dressing. Your money is a gift. And that's the reason when God gives you money, he also gives you wisdom Amen. on how to manage. Amen. Because if you cannot manage the wealth or the gift that God gives you every day, very soon you become poor. That's the reason we have what we call ex-rich men. Ex-rich men. Say ex rich men. Ex rich men. They have only stories that we used to be. We used to be rich in 1973. We used to drive a pigeon. Where is the pigeon? It's nowhere. They are trekking using their leg these bases. When God gives
gives you finance, let me talk about something here. When God gives you finance, you must put it in your mind that the finance that he has given you, it is number one for two things. Whenever God gives you money, there is money for eating and there is money for keeping. Amen. You don't eat everything. There is money for eating and there is money for keeping. Money for eating is the one that you can spend. Money for keeping belongs to the Lord. Amen. Now money for keeping someone will go and use it. Money is a gift from the Lord. That's the reason most of you are suffering financially because you don't know how to keep the gift. You overspend. You buy unnecessary things. You don't have program. You don't have a budget. You buy anything that you want to buy. And very soon you end up becoming poor. And it's not the devil. Don't even lie about the devil. It's you who is the greatest devil. Don't look for the devil. Uh, tell your neighbor, don't look for the devil. Don't look for the devil. Oh. Tell your neighbor, don't look for the devil. Don't look for the devil. If you can't manage the gift that God gives you every day, you end up inheriting the character of the devil. So we are not looking for another devil. You have just taken over. Management, management of the gift. Keeping the gift must be a fundamental principle. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Do you know how much you have been spending? You? Huh? Okay, okay, okay. Let's break it down. Do you know how many churches you have changed? You. Do you know how many churches you have changed? 25. <laughs> now, let's, let's take from the day they were born. Let's take how much uh, 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 the offering, the time, the seeds they have been giving. In all these different, different, different churches, let's take all the seeds and bring them together. Can you imagine how much you have given? Can you imagine? By this time, you would have been a millionaire. But because your seeds are in different places, you don't know which one is germinating. You want every seed to speak for you. <laughs> your seed is in every, it's scattered. It's a scattered seed. Tell me about scattered seed. Scattered you seed. are sowing scattered seeds and expecting a miracle. Sowing scattered seeds. Imagine God gave you finances, but you lacked wisdom. You lacked wisdom on how to manage. You just go and withdraw anyhow. Anyhow. I've understood one thing that I'm a very bad manager. Very bad one. That's the reason I don't keep money. Because if you give me money within two minutes, it's gone. I just find this person I give, this one I give. This is me. And I've discovered that this one paralyzes me. It's not the devil involved. This is me, it's my problem. So you have a problem of lack of management of the gift. Whenever God brings money, two things that must come out in your mind is there's money for keeping and there's money for spending. Amen. Tell me about money for keeping, money for keeping and, money for and money for spending. There is God when he gives you wealthy, when God takes you on top, he will not sustain you. When God gives you a job, he will not keep it for you. When God gives you a husband, he will not keep a husband. 
It is now you, common sense. We call it common sense. To know these two principles, the principle of keeping and the principle of dressing. Your husband is a gift. Money is a gift. Your pastor is a gift. You are not hearing this. Amen. Your pastor is a gift. Your children are a gift. That's the reason. If you don't keep your children, they will die. You will bury them. You are busy concentrating on your on your work, on your work, and children at home, they are with a maid, and the maid is early in the morning. Come. <laughs> I watched a certain a certain uh, 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 clip. I think it was from Uganda, where a maid was busy stepping. Stepping on the child. I said, Barusha Balia. I said, not for my son. Not for my son. If I catch you, you will know why you entered my house. Look, God, children, they are a gift. If you don't know how to keep your children, they'll be sick. You just give them everything. You know the reason why your child does not get fat? No, listen. Do you know the reason why a child does not get fat? If I tell you, you'll be so shocked. It's because <laughs> during the time of preparation of food, the mother tastes too much food. So they forget a child. Oh, you're not hearing this. They first feed themselves. Oh, you're not hearing this. And after they eat, they eat. That's when they take, they give the child. So the child takes second. And the child is not full. Now he begins to go and search. They find something on the, on the ground, they pick. They are giving you a sign. They say, Mama, I was not full. Find the child. Mama, it's nice. It's nice. It's a sign. They are telling you, say, Mama, the food you give me, you eat too much. You eat too much. You eat my food. Your children, they are a gift. Amen. If you don't know how to keep your children, very soon you will lose them. Amen. I have seen careless mothers who don't know how to keep their children. Being a father is not the ability of procreation. It's not just having children. No. There are many people who have got children, but they are not fathers. What qualifies you to be a father is not just having babies. It's the ability to keep and to raise. Amen. That's the reason. As I'm preaching now, my, my other eye is on you. My, that, my other eye is upon my child. Because I know now, as I'm ministering, it's like the devil is annoyed. So we must keep our children. Now, the act of keeping and dressing. In another way, if your child is misbehaving, dress them very well. You know how to dress? is to clean them. You can them. The process of caning them is a process of dressing. You are, you are addressing some certain things that are not supposed to be in their lives. Amen. Because if you leave them like that, there will be a social disaster. Amen. That's the reason some of you, the way you are raised up, you are raised up carelessly. Just heartless. You don't care. I, I don't care type. Because there was no process of dressing you. You can dress anything. You will take trousers, you put it here. Because there was no one to tell you, hey! There was no one. There was no one. You know, you know their parents, their parents, when they see a child drinking beer, they'll say, oh, drink another one. They pamper children. Listen to me. Listen to me. 
Number one, you must keep what God has given you and dress it. Now, to dress is to rebuke. <laughs> to sharpen. Correct with love. Look, if you want me to be your father, you need to know me. Amen. Number one, I keep you. Number two, I dress you. What I don't want to see on your body, right away I remove it. Amen. That is a rebuke. The process of what? Of, of dressing and keeping is, is, is like a marriage. You can't separate them. You keep your children. I don't remember when I, I, I entered my mother's house. Uh, zero two. I don't. But, but some of you, the way you were growing up, zero. Zero two. You are entering through the window. And your mother will be like, welcome. Me, by that time, if I do that, I'm already dead. The act of keeping and dressing, you must be able, you must be able to discipline your children. And that process is a process of dressing character. Even on money, when your wife is spending too much, sit her down. Say, my wife, this strength is finishing. The strength that I have now, I'm too, I'm too fresh. But give me 30, 40 years, you will see gray hair all over. Thank you. You will see gray hair. You will see all this jumping, they will minimize. I'll be now doing ministry of big people. The strength that you have now must never go in vain. There are some of you when you get old. Me, I don't want to get old and then I begin to carry charcoal. One day I'm walking in the street. I found a man who was carrying charcoal. And I asked the Lord, Lord, why is this man carrying charcoal? The Lord says he jumped the law of diligence. I said, how? He said, when he was young, he did not work. So now he's working while he's old. <laughs> so any old man you see laboring while he's old, it is a law. The law of diligence is working on him now. Because when he was young, he did not want to work. He did not want to invest. He did not want to keep what God gave him. Amen. And now he's old. There's nothing. Amen. Tell me about I will keep. Tell me about I will keep. And I will dress. So your pastor is a gift. Your children, they're a gift. Amen. Your wife, she's a gift. Amen. Don't just keep her. Also dress her. Dresser. There are some men, they don't dress their wives. They look like he, Ay. <laughs> like a witch doctor. <laughs> a man will be dressing a smart suit. Nice, nice, nice suit. Look at the wife. <laughs> <She's coming. laughs> you ask, sir, is this your wife? Sir, is this your wife? Like, ah, what do you mean? <laughs> When God gives you a wife, it is for two things. For dressing up and for keeping. Amen. In another way, don't keep what you can't dress. And don't dress what you can't keep. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Your wife, she's a gift. She's a gift. There is a need of decoration. For you to enjoy her. 
She must be decorated. She must look like a flower. Are you listening? You amen. men. You men, are you listening? Amen. Hey, you men, shout amen. Amen. If you want to see that a man is a responsible or irresponsible man, look at the wife. Bring a wife. and I, Bring your wife and I will show you who you are. Because just by the sandals, I will know. There are women that are complaining in churches. Oh, my husband, he does not buy clothes for me. He does not give me money. Why did you marry her? Why? It's for two things. To dress and to keep. Amen. While you are dressing, while you are dressing, you must also have another hand to keep. Because as you are dressing, another man will come and do. That's the reason there are most of you, you pampered, you pampered some people. You took them to school. After taking them to school, now after becoming big, another man came and collected your works. Because you had no act of keeping. You were just dressing. After dressing the whole church, the whole church after laboring, after laboring, the day when you're supposed to receive a reward, another man comes and overthrows you. I said, so I'm very keen. Whatever God gives me here is a gift. Amen. It's a gift. There are some certain people, they are so careless because they, they, they have never bought anything. They have never started a church. But the one who has started a church, he will know how much keyboard, how much it is. <laughs> how much the drum set. But the one who doesn't know, he will just come and break the drum set. Even his playing, it will be like demons is manifesting. <laughs> and you ask, what is, what is wrong? What did the drum set do to you? I know I am just praying. I'm just playing. I feel the Holy Ghost. Which Holy Ghost? You are breaking the drum set. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know, people have never bought a chair in church. You will see them, even on their sitting. When they just come, they sit. <laughs> and the chair will you cut, cut, cut. The act of dressing and keeping must be an act of every believer. Amen. Whatever we have is a gift. Where we are, this place is a gift. Amen. The one that you are sitting next to is a gift. Amen. The chair is a gift. Amen. The microphone is a gift. My dressing, what I'm putting on now, it is a gift. Amen. So if I don't keep them very well, huh, one day, some of you, you, you have got a lot of clothes, you throw them anyhow, you have got a lot of shoes, In your, in your wardrobe is like a, a boutique. I entered in a certain daughter of mine in, in, in the room. Ha! I find some shoes. Others are looking like crocodile. <laughs> in the corner, there were bags. I asked her a question. He said, are these all yours? He said, yes, Papa, I'm still buying more. And the rats will come and invade your blessing if you can't keep it. Amen. I'm telling you. Your hair is a gift Amen. to your head. Amen. Let's cut your hair, you will see. Some of you will forget you. <laughs> that day will just forget you. Be like, are you the one or what? 
You are looking beautiful like that because a gift of hair. God has given you a gift. The Bible says the gift of a man shall create room for him and present him before great men. Amen. God has given you a gift. But God wants you to know two things. Number one, the principle of keeping and the principle of tracing. Whenever you come in this church, the first thing that you see is decoration. Behind all this concept, there is a man who had to come up with a thought. Amen. Say, okay, well, these things have become, uh, I don't love them. Let's, let's change. But then we began to dress the church. We said, okay, uh, okay, uh, we don't want uh, these speakers, they're very bad. No, okay, let's buy another ones, good ones. So that we can have nice sound. Nice sound. Okay, what about the chairs? Okay, mm, these chairs, ah, they are not good. They are not good. What are we going to do? Let's buy. We need this kind of chairs we bought. So that you can have comfort. Anyone who has never bought anything, that person is careless. And don't put them as leaders. will you know that this person has the ability or the gift of leadership? It's two things. Keeping and dressing. Amen. That's the reason when I look at you, I know that you, you are not a leader. You are a ladder. Because there is a parable. The Bible says, then God gave others gifts and talents. Then he came and asked. If God can come to you and ask you, that which I gave you, where is it? We we'll hear stories here. If you ask me, if, you, if God can come today, did Isaac, I gave you this. I'll be able to give him a report right away. A leader who does not give a report fire them. They will give you a problem. Where is your gift? Where is your gift? Where is your gift? And I'm asking you, where is your gift? Do you think that you are, you are not gifted? Huh? Hey, hey, do you think you are not gifted? Hey, I'm asking you, do you think you are not gifted? Hey, do you think you are not gifted? When you select someone to be in charge of a certain department, you give them two responsibilities. Number one, to dress and to keep you. Amen. And those things, you must look at them very keen. That's the reason I don't appear to ask people. I don't. Because I use these two principles. The principle of keeping and dressing. I know a person who has the ability to keep and to dress then that person is where they trusted. Amen. That's the reason some of you, God, God cannot give you someone's child. <laughs> because you will beat the child. You be what? A child like this, you are. That's the reason even the neighbors are afraid of you. They don't want to leave a child for you because your heart, you can't keep another child for somebody. You can't. The Bible says, if you cannot keep someone's goods, God cannot entrust you. You think keeping is a job? Wait and see. Start your business. Start your business. You will know. If you have never kept the business of someone, wait and see. When you employ your workers, there will be thieves. Because it's a seed in the blood. It's a seed in the blood. The act of keeping must be your lifestyle. Amen. 
There are some daughters of mine that I call and some sons of mine. Today, stand up, stand up, stand up. Today you found me where? Outside. Huh? Have you ever found me outside today? Huh? There was no one here. Huh? What time was it? It was uh, around one. Around one o'clock. I was there. I was seated where? At the car park. On top of the, the car. On top of the car. Yes. Huh? Was I looking like a prophet? No, never. He did not even know. He just discovered just my voice. Hey, my son. And I go, Papa. Ah. I was putting on a cape. And I said, come here. Come here. There are people that we put them on the leg. Others we put them on the heart. Amen. It's either you are on the leg. Or it's either you are here. That's the reason you will see. My other sons, my other sons, I will, I will hold them like this. This is an act of love. Amen. There is a covenant with the heart of a prophet. Amen. The moment I bring you close like this, I say, my son, by the blessing of God, So it's either you're on my heart, I keep you, or you're on my leg. And for me to reach my leg by my hand is a process. That's a reason also as prophets, we keep people, we keep. I keep you. Because I know. I keep you. One daughter of mine called me today. Oh, daddy, oh. I said, shut up. She knows she's here. Daddy, no. I said, shut up. You want to speak to me? Be quiet first. No, daddy. She knows. She's here. Amen. <laughs> she's here. <laughs> I said, shut up. <laughs> no, daddy, daddy. I said, shut up. Cool down. Speak like my daughter. Hey, daddy, this, 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 this. I said, okay, I'm your father now. I spoke to her as my daughter. Amen. Because she was broken. Because I know if I did not speak to her, by that time, she would have found another source. Amen. Amen. So I must be available for you. And at the same time, I must disappear from you. Amen. The act of keeping must never depart away from your life. Amen. You must keep whatever God gives you. Amen. Not just keep, but also dress it. Let it look very nice. Amen. That's the reason most of you, God will never use you. You can't keep his people. You can't. You can't keep his people. If God gives you people today, you will destroy them. You will destroy them. Keeping and dressing must be a couple. Amen. Today, where is Emmanuel? Where is Emmanuel? Where is Emmanuel? I exalt you. Where is Emmanuel? Run. Can you run? We bought a camera today. Huh? I took the camera. I gave it home. Give it to me. Uh, I told you what? I told you that I must take it and give it to Sifazi. I said what? That I must bring it back to you. That was an instruction. I took the camera. I gave it to who? Huh? him. And what did I say? That I must bring it back to you. If you must save a father, you must learn these two things. Keeping what he has given you. And not just keeping, but dressing it so that he can be happy. You can't bring, you can't bring. You are from using the camera. You are from using the camera. The camera is very dirty. And you bring it to a prophet. So I told him, I said, when you are done, bring it to me. 
He did, know that. he did not know that that was a test. I was testing him. <laughs> and I wanted to know. I, was, I just wanted to know. I wanted to check his mind. What he thinks. What he thinks. That's a reason the Lord will never bless you. Because God gives you money. But you don't return it. Back to him. You don't. God gives you money. God gives you cars. God gives you children. You don't return them back to him. So he says, no, I will not give you again. Keeping and dressing. Amen. Even your suit, if you don't keep it, sir, very soon it will get tired. Amen. You say, I surrender. I don't want you anymore. This altar that you see, this altar is well decorated. But a person who has got know these two principles of keeping and dressing, they will see a problem on the altar. They will not do anything. When the sons of Noah saw the nakedness, another one had to cover and to dress the father. Amen. Two things. Keep your father and dress him. Oh. Amen. Keep your father and dress him. Amen. Tell me, but keep your father. Keep your father. And dress him. And dress him. If today you can find me drinking beer, you. Ah! BBC will write, drinking prophet or drunken master. Drunken <laughs> they have sons who cannot keep their father. They are waiting for the father to fall so they can take over. Just waiting. You have put a banana. He said, My father, <laughs> when he comes, <laughs> they put banana <laughs> for the father. And when the father breaks the, the bag, bah! Be like, hey! they'll be happy, very happy. Keep your father and dress him. Dress, dress and keep. And keep. Dress the church and keep the church. Amen. Amen. If today I can call you, I said, my daughter, starting from today, you'll be leading the church. Come here. Give me the, give me the microphone. Give me the microphone. Give her the microphone. Stand here. Stand here. Stand on the pulpit here. Here. Stand. Stand here. Stand here. Now, I've given you these people. Preach to them. Teach them. With my anointing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Amen. So, uh, okay, sorry. Okay, so we're going to talk about how much God loves us. Okay. Um, often we, we go through trials and tribulations. And we think, we say to God, why is this happening to us in our life? Why are we waiting for so long for him to change our life? We cry out and we say, Lord, your word says that you satisfy all our needs according to your riches and glory, right? But we don't see anything. And um, 
being in this church, I've, I've learned that we, we have authority, but we don't realize we have authority. And Pops always talks about that we need to grab what God has given us, as he was saying uh, in, the, in the message tonight, that he has given us everything in the garden. But we need to grab onto it. And you know, God loves us so much. Sometimes when I'm going through so much, I think, I, I just hear the Holy Spirit say, God loves you and he will give you this breakthrough. But we need to know how much God loves us. Sometimes we, 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 we think, you know, God wants to condemn us, maybe because we're not praying enough or we, we sin one day, we make a mistake. But we need to know God loves us and because God loves us, he will make everything possible for us. It says in his word that nothing is impossible to God. Amen. 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 Nothing is impossible to God. Amen. So I think we just need to keep declaring every morning that God loves us. And his mercy and grace is new every morning. So I think when we declare that every morning, things will begin to change in our life. And also our thinking needs to change. Sometimes we'll wake up in the morning and we say, God, we really need this. I'm tired. I'm really tired. But if we think and we say, but God's mercy and grace is new every morning, things will begin to change around us. We will get into that meeting and we'll say, I am getting this contract because God loves me. And we will receive it immediately. So I think when we are declaring, we need, while we were declaring, we can't just, yes, we must declare, but we can't just declare without, without faith, right? And I believe that faith is knowing that God loves us. Amen. Amen. So I think we just need to keep remembering that God loves us no matter what. Amen. Listen, I did this for a purpose. I did this for a purpose because she's been with me from the beginning. I did this for a purpose. And I've been watching her every time. Can I ask you a question? If today I can sit down, and tell you, preach. Will you even mention my name? That's the reason most people fail to save prophets because the first thing is that they have been given the podium. It's a, it's a gift. You see what I'm... It's a gift. It's a gift. So it's up to her because now she's in charge. She's in front. Huh? So she can even tell them to stand. Okay. Everyone stand up. Praise the Lord. Okay, we can sit. Amen. Okay, let's stand up and say thank you, Jesus. God loves me. Amen. Let's sit and praise the Lord. Lift up your hands. Amen. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you, Lord, that I'm here today. Now, now, is it me who was speaking? Huh? I gave her the gift to command the crowd to obey her. Do anything now. Command. Okay, let's pray, guys. Let's stand up and pray. Hallelujah. Let's just thank God for everything, how our life has changed. Amen. Say thank you, Jesus. That I am here today. I confess that I am free from every poverty, from every bondage. 
from every bondage. And what you, O oh Lord, is doing in my life. And what you, O oh Lord, you are doing in my life. Shall change my life forever. Shall change my life forever. I am moving forward. I am moving forward. From glory to glory. From glory to glory. From joy to joy. From joy to joy. No sorrow is upon my head starting from today. No sorrow is upon my head starting from today. I am standing in the garden of the Lord. Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? Shh. Do you see that? Huh? Do you see that? I. You see that demon? You see that? Okay. Is it me who command? Who, who command it? Huh? It's a gift I've given her. Simple. It's a gift. Very simple. It is up to her whether to dress it or to keep it. But the gift has been given freely. Receive the gift from the Lord. Very easy. You see? Did you know that the demon can manifest? Huh? Did you know? Is it your first time? Yes. Huh? Yes. Now, now, take your finger. Take your finger. Point. Point. Just point at that demon. Just say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, in the shoes of my father. In the shoes of my father. I command you. I command you. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the shoes of my father, Prophet Didi Isaac, I command you to come out. You see that? The demon is manifesting because me, me, they know me. You, they don't know you. Poor I know, but who are you? Poor I know, but who are you? Where do you belong? Jesus, they know him. Poor they know him, but who are you? That's a question. That's a question. So this is very easy for her to flow in the anointing because I have released it on her. God bless you. Put your two hands for her. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. Sit down. Everyone, sit down. Let us sit down. Do you see that? Do you see that? Huh? So it is up to her to keep the gift. Pastors? Pastors? Uh... Pastor Emmanuel, Sipo, where's Sipo? Cast, cast that demon. Order on the umbilical cord, on the umbilical cord. Yeah, on the umbilical cord. On the umbilical cord. Yeah, on the umbilical cord. Take her in the detention room. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see how easy it is. Huh? It's very easy. You know, let me tell you. For me, for me to raise you, it's very easy. I can give you this gift, but the problem to dress it and to keep it. Amen. That's why there's a problem. Amen. That's the reason most of you, if I give you the healing grace, it will kill you. Because it has a principle. It has a principle. You want my anointing? It has a principle. Do you want it? Do you want it? It has a principle. The principle of what? Keeping and what? Tell me about the principle of keeping and dressing. It's very easy. It's very easy to flow in the anointing. It's very what? 
very easy. I can even raise a child, a child to speak to you. A child to speak to you. <laughs> so to flow in the anointing is, is not hard the way, the way you see it. It's not hard. And most of you, you are privileged. At least, you know, you are close to the prophet, this and that. It is very easy. The problem is that you can't keep what you receive every day. You continue losing it. That's the reason every day you come for impartation. Why? Restoration. When you go there, you lose it. If I release the anointing, I say, receive the anointing of millionaires. You have received it. After a few minutes, you will lose it. You will need my hand again. So every day you continue to lose. That's the reason you come here. For what? For impartation. Every day. I must pray for you. So you need to keep what God has given you. Keep your children. Keep everything that is around you. Keep your finances. Dress it. Dress it. And you will see that God will bless you. This one, this one here. Stand up. There's no son of mine who's stronger than this one. This one. This one. If you don't know, I have tested you. I've given you a promise. Follow me. I received it. I received it. I received it. Follow me. If I fail, you will fail. If I fail, you will fail. Just follow me and see. Jesus told his disciples, follow me. Some, they wanted to follow him. Jesus said, go. Not everyone must follow you. Some, they must remain. I've tested you too many, too many times. Too many times. Too many times. And I've personally seen that you, you are very strong. Received it. Very strong. I have personally seen. Very, I've personally seen that this one is strong. You know, sometimes you, <laughs> you'll be here on the podium and I'm looking at him singing. Hey, on empty stomach. I'll, I'll be singing. And I'll just leave him. I want to see. Now, the time has come. I give you a promise that where I will be, you shall be. I receive. I receive. Write these words. It's my promise for you. I receive. As a prophet. I receive. It's my promise for you. I receive. Where I will be, what I will eat, you will eat also. I receive. Just follow me and keep me. Thank you. Jesus. And dress me. You will see. I received. The rejected stone has now become the chief cornerstone. I received. I received. You did not profit, but now you profit. I received the grace. I received. Let us see. Let us see. I've tested him from the beginning. He's been with me for quite some time. You, if I don't give you money. <laughs> well, uh, I'll be all over news. Fake prophet. Fake one. Just because two days I did not give you food. If you want to know a real son and a real daughter, don't give them anything. See? And on top of that, give them possession.
position. <laughs> Give them position. And one of my secret of ministry is I look like I don't see. But I see. I look like I'm not concerned, but I'm concerned. That's my secret of ministry. There are people when, when I look at them like this, I know them one by one. one, by one. Where's your sister? You? The one who broke the leg. Huh? Did you tell me she's your sister? She, she's a best friend of yours, but you come together to church. We always come together. Yeah. Who is I see you? I see. Every time when they enter church, I know. Do you see that? Uh, have I ever sat with you in the office? Not at all, Pastor. For how many years have you been here? I've been here for a year and three months. I've never sat with her in the office. <laughs> huh? Yes, Father. I've never. And yet, she still follows me. That's maturity. That's maturity. That's maturity. That's it. Thank you. Have I ever met you in the office? Huh? Huh? No, Papa. Have I? No, Papa. I've met you in the office, you. Eh. Have I ever met you in the office? Some of you, are, I will see your face. I know. I've met you in the office. I've met you. You, have I met you in the office? In the office, okay. You? Ah, even you. Have you ever met me in the office? No, Papa, you never met me in the office. Do you know the color of my office? No, Papa. Sit down. Do you know my office? Do you know my office? No. Do you know my office? Do you know my, do you know my office? Yes, Have I ever met you? No, not one-on-one, -on -one, Daddy. One-on-one? -on -one. No. Have I? Have I? Have I? Have I? Have I? Hmm? Have I ever met you in my office? One-on-one? -on -one? One on one? I've never. Even in my office, I've never. No, I've just entered, but you, I never met so you. You have one. never talked to me, like sitting down. How do you feel? Sa saving a man that you can't sit you, and talk to him. And some of you are like, ah, you know, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. Ah, angeke, angeke. Okay, God bless you. You? In the office? You've never? Hey, you've never met me in the office? You? You? You've never met me? You? Have you ever met me in the office? Yes, I have come to the office. Papa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you. Uh, when did you receive my number? You too. Ask them this. Yes, uh, no, no. Ask them when they received my number. When? When did I give you my number? Uh, you always change. To I always what? You always change. <laughs> how many numbers do I have? How many numbers do you have for me? A lot, Trader. Thank you, sir. A lot. Imagine having a man like this. Can't you get tired? Huh? You? Not yet, sir. Have you ever sat with me? No. Huh? No. Yeah. You? Okay. Uh -huh. That one? Who is that one? What face is that? <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. This one? Okay. You? 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 Okay, let's find out. You? You have sat with me? Yes, Papa. Huh? How many times? Once. 
We were talking about the arrangement of the church. Just once. Yes, Papa. For the rest of our life, once. <coughs> Imagine. You? 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 Okay. You? 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 Sam, you have never... Huh? This one is my first Asha. Amen. It's true, Baba. For the first day, I know... He has never... I'm telling you, my first Asha, yes, Baba. he has never sat day. with me. I'm doing this to show you that this is a minister of a prophet. He has never met me. But I just meet, hey, hi, how are you? He's never even sat with me. <laughs> okay, another one. You have met me before? You? You? Can you give those the ladies, those who look like twins? <laughs> you? Yes, Papa. Okay, you? I have, Papa. You? Yes, I have. You? Yes, I have. You? Not yet, but... <laughs> Not you have yet. never? Never. It's a miracle even for me. Okay. Pops, I got confused. I've been somewhere upstairs, but I'm not sure that was your office. <laughs> and uh, I didn't even sit down. You? Yes, I've been there somewhere upstairs, but I'm not sure that was your office. So you don't know? I'm not sure, Pops. So. Um, Do you know that I even don't have your office? I'm telling you. You'll be so shocked. Okay, yes. That is my uncle. That is my uncle. Have you ever met me to sit down? No. My uncle. That is my auntie there. Have you ever met me to sit down with me? No. You only meet at home. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay, you, Jason, have met? Okay, you, my daughter. Uh, you? You? Yes, Papa. How many times? Once. Once. Uh-huh. You? Yes, Papa. Okay. Okay, go to the general overseers. <laughs> Behind there. Yes? Um, Theo? No, no, they don't discuss my issues. No. I don't. But it's my protocol. I don't even discuss his issues. Okay. Enoch? Uh, you, you call me when you want to send me somewhere. I just call you. Yes. When I want to send you somewhere, yes. that's when I call him. And when I ask you what's God saying, you said it's well, my son. I'll talk to you. Do you see that? Because those that are close to me, they don't need prayer. Amen. That's what you don't know. Those that are close to me, I am their prayer. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. You, have you ever met me? Once, Daddy, when you introduced me to my wife. Papa. Hey, that's the only time you met me. Once, Papa. Clap us for Jesus. You... No, daddy, at home, yes. Okay, only in the house. You, you are coming like generals. Hurry up. No, daddy, we, we eh? didn't. Have you ever met me? No. Huh? No. That one? I, I think I met you once. Once? Yes, when there was Bishop. Shima, give him, give him the microphone. You, have you ever met me? No, Papa. He has never met me. Okay, Pastor Keith. <laughs> Pastor Keith, how many times do we talk? No, just tell them. How many times do we talk? We don't talk very often. Uh huh. But I just give you direction. Just give me direction. Ah, imagine. He is my resident pastor. I just talk to him when I want to give him direction. Imagine. 
You. Have you ever met me? No, Papa. Huh? No. Okay. You? No, Papa. You? It is my prayer to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> you? Yes, fans. Okay, Apostle. Most of the time we, we talk on the phone. How do I answer? Him, he has been complaining. Huh? He's been complaining. He tried to communicate. And I, I send him all the messages. He's, I'm great. I'm good. I'm sharp. The other time, I even told you that I wrote, you know, a long story. The only thing that you said to me, it was power. And I was so bothered. I said, no, this is not good. <laughs> he was bothered. <laughs> Imagine. I just wrote power. <laughs> okay, okay. You, when you send me a message, you, when you send me a message, what do I write? Huh? Huh? Power. Power <laughs> only. Where is he, Glenn? Glenn, when you send me a message, he's, he's the director of DD, DD Vest. Uh huh. No, you just say power. They know now my language. When I say power, which means it's okay. It's okay. Don't cry. It is okay. Now, imagine saving such kind of a prophet. You. This one. She's working in my office. A few days ago. You have been trying to call me. Uh huh. Have you managed? You can't get hold of you, Papa. You can't get hold of me. Ask her. She can't get hold of me. You will call me and I will, I, will, I will tell you that I'm busy now. Imagine. Is it easy to save a prophet? No. It's not easy. No, but it's good. But it's good, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's not easy. So ask, hey, you, my wife. I, I married her. She's mine. Stand up. Give her the microphone. Hey, I'm your husband. Stroke your prophet. <laughs> tell, tell them how hard it is to save me. Ask her. I think it's the only taste that I've ever failed God in my life. She fails. Huh? I always ask God to say, I think I've had assignments to Save, and I believe I've passed most of the assignments, but the hardest among all is the assignment of prophet leading. It's not easy to save. Uh, it's she, it's coming from toughest, my wife. It's coming it's from my wife. The most toughest, the most painful, the most what? And sometimes you just have to do it because you have to sacrifice. Yeah. You've heard. She's telling you the truth. And he has never seen me also in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. It's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult. I'm, I'm telling you. Especially those that are married to major prophets. Ah. Sometimes, you know, I feel for her. I say, you know... No, I wish I was just a businessman. Because this, being a prophet, it takes time. Last Sunday, we, I, we finished the service around 7. Huh? I was praying for everyone. It takes time. No time for your family. But still more, she keeps me as a prophet. Imagine. I come very tired at home. I can't even eat. I just go upstairs. I go and throw myself. I sleep. And in the morning, honey, honey, honey. I say, well, hey, what up? How are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've prepared this. It's a sacrifice. Two things. Keep. Address. When you understand these two principles, I'm telling you, it will never be hard to save anybody. It will never. 
I've told him several times, this one, I've told him that, you see what? Me, I love him. I even told him, I said, you see, no one can compare my love that I have for you because it's a genuine one. And that's the reason I keep him and I dress the relationship. Any relationship that you don't dress, it will dry up. Any relationship that you don't water, you don't dress, it will dry up. That's the reason most of you, your relationship with me has dried up. Because you don't water it, you just leave it. He says, ah, even me, I can prophesy. You will prophesy, but without grace. <laughs> there are people who prophesy, but without grace of the prophetic. But me, even if I don't prophesy, I'm still a prophet. Because there is a grace attached to me. So don't leave a relationship. Keep it. Water it. With good words. With your support. Encouragement. Are you listening? It will help you. Don't just remain quiet. And you. What I'm trying to, 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 to tell you. You. How many times do you communicate to me? Huh? Spirit read. Ask him. But if I want you, I'll find you. If I want him, I'll find you. Yesterday your phone was off. Huh? Your phone was off. I called. I called in the morning. Called in the morning. I was in the office from 10 o'clock. Huh? Yes, ma'am. From 10 o'clock till 8. Till 8 in the night. What was I doing? I told you what? They pray, Papa. I was praying for what? For the land, Papa. I told him, I said, son, I'm here. I'm praying for the land. I need the land. So, being a prophet is a gift to the people. I am your gift. But if you don't speak to me, if you don't water the relationship that you have with me, very soon it will dry. And the moment the relationship, it dries, I'm telling you, to restart it, it is very hard. Most of you used to be very, very close. You don't know what made you to be far away. You dried up the relationship. It must be watered. I pray for you. I receive. That you will keep whatever God will bring to you. I receive. In the name of Jesus. I receive. In the name of Jesus. I receive. I have my brother, Apostle Peter, is my son. I struck my brother. And there are some times I sit down and begin to teach him strategy of ministry. Do you want me to open up to you what makes me to flourish? Huh? Or, or do you think it's prayer? Do you think it's prayer? Eh? I'm asking, do you think it's prayer? Continue praying. Continue praying. Do 40 days, 80 days, 90 days, 200 days. Do it. You will come here. They will bring on the wheelchair. What makes a person to prosper? It is no prayer. The Bible says Uzziah prospered because he followed a prophet. Following a prophet. It's not for how long you are going to be with him. Keep him for as long as you want. Keep him. Keep me. Very soon, the gift is about to be unfolded. Very soon. A time is coming when we go to our land. A time is coming that even for people to enter the land, they will be queuing. I promise you, prophets announce before it happens. Before it happens, I'm busy. I'm mentioning this several times. Several times. Several times I'm mentioning. And people, they are thinking it's a joke. Wait and see. When it comes to pass, you will know that surely what he spoke, it was true. You will not even have space yourself. 
it's better you keep me. Tell me by it's better you keep me. I'm about to become the next president. Oh, tell your neighbor. It's better you keep me. It's better you keep my number. Very soon, you will look for my number. It will take you one year. There are people who are looking down on me. Oh, where is that guy going? I said, wait and see. Wait and see. <laughs> wait and see. Where is he going? I said, wait and see. We will see you and me. Who is God? Who called God or who God called? <laughs> they came here. Ah, we want to see. We want to. Even me, when they came, I just looked at them. I said, can I promise that? Are you listening? And, and they, they were queuing. They were queuing. And my protocol came. Your friends have come to see you. I said, which friends? They said, no. They said that you used to play with. Uh, you used to play together. I said, where? <laughs> what time? Which year? Which grade? A time is coming that those that are looking down on you, if they can't keep you very well, they will lose their connection. Any son of mine who will not treasure this relationship very soon when it's broken, not even the Holy Spirit will repair it. I promise you this. When a relationship has been sealed by the Holy Spirit, if it is broken, the Holy Spirit can't repair because he distanced himself completely. Our union, our meeting, it was divine. There is no person here, here, I promise you, there is no person who I did not prophesy to. I promise you, everyone here, I gave them prophetic words and all of them, it was true what I said. And up to now, I still record them. They're in my mind. I'm like on co computer. I can tell you what I prophesied to you. From the day I met you, what you were putting on. If it was a mosquito net. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember there was, a, there was a lady. There was a lady I met. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Where was that? Look at me. Why am I here? That one. That lady. This one, this daughter of mine, this one here, putting on white. This one. First Sunday when she came. She was looking at time. She was even telling the mom, Mama, at this church, they don't finish. It was only that day. Huh? Only that time. Only that time. She was looking at time. Ah. First Sunday, it was very hard for her. Second Sunday, it entered the blood. <laughs> I pray for you. The way you are answering your people. I receive. I pray for you. I receive. That God will cause you to keep anything that he gives you. I receive. But there are some other connections you must not keep. Other connections you must not keep. Cut them. That's the reason for the past three months, the Lord has been cutting people away from my life. Cutting them one by one. Cutting them. And I, 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 I prayed. I said, Lord, why are you doing this? And the Lord said, I'm cutting them. It's for my sake. You carried, you carried the children of Israel and among the children of Israel, they were Egyptians. So I don't need them for the Canaan. I need to kill them along the way. Because if they go with the children of Israel, we are going to raise what we call mixed breed. Mixed breed. God, he would rather keep you than keep your enemy. That's the reason God wants to separate you. He doesn't want to keep your enemies close to you. He will continue to reveal them. 
their plans, what they are doing. There's, look, there's one thing that God gave me. And I'll pray for you that you have that spirit. Oh, you are not receiving. I'm one person. I'm one person. When I pray, when I pray, the moment I sleep, if I say, God, show me about this woman. It's like the hand of the Lord carries me to, from the beginning of your life. That's a spirit you must have. Put yourself on a place where you give God a program. You say, God, I want to see who is this person. Is she genuine? Is he genuine? And you will see. I've learned all these things. All these things. There are some connections you must disconnect yourself from. I, oh, Parush. Where God cannot take me, may I never go there. Right. Where God cannot take me, may I never go there. What God cannot give me, may I not have it. What God cannot give you, may you not have it. Where God cannot take you, may you never go there. I even don't desire to go there. God wants to keep you. And God wants to dress you. My prayer tonight is that your eyes must open. To see who to keep you. And to see who to dress. I receive. There are people that you have been dressing and they have turned against you. You have dressed them after they have known <laughs> how, how to prophesy. Say, now I'm a prophet. You have helped them. And now they are stabbing. Before now, you dressed them. Know the spirit. Now you have learned a lesson. You'll be very active and sensitive to know who you are dressing. Don't dress what you can't keep. Don't keep what you can't dress. It is my prayer for you. I receive. That God must make you sensitive. I receive. Let me give you a story. When God was calling me, I want you to listen to this and write my story. When God called me, you were not there. I repeat again. When God called me. You were not there. You were not there. You did not know for what purpose he called me for. And why he raised me. And when he called me, I entered covenant with God. I'm in covenant. Very dangerous covenant. That's the reason if I respond with my mouth, it doesn't take years. It's a covenant I made. The day when the Lord was anointing me, he bent my lips. He bent my lips. He said, this is a sign that whatever you will speak, it will be like a laser bread to cut. The Lord said, because I've bent your lips, your words will be like a laser bread. That's the reason. The moment you see me, I say, you HIV, go. It's like a word that comes to cut the virus. I made covenant that you don't know. Dangerous one. And some of the covenant costed me. Has costed my family. Has costed 
things that are precious in my life for the sake of me to be where I am today. This church you see is on an international level. We have got a global impact. It's not a local church. It's not a local church. It's, it has got a global impact. It does not come like that. He bent my lips and he said, your words will be sharper than a laser bread. And he spoke to me. He said, listen, son. I have called you as a covenant messenger. I'm a messenger. I'm a messenger. That's the reason when you meet me, you must, your life must change. Your life must change. Do you know what it means, a messenger? A carrier of information. Massive information of God's people. I've sent you as a covenant messenger of harvest. Tell my people the harvest is ready and let them eat. Let them eat. Let them eat. The harvest, it was ready from the beginning of my calling. Not now. The harvest was ready from the beginning of my calling. There was no church, no chair, no equipment. It was in the bush when I saw thousands of people. And the Lord said, prophesy to the trees. And when I prophesy, the Lord says, according to your prophecy, the trees will turn themselves to thousands. That's the reason you are here today. Amen. And the Lord said, I'll give you power. I'll give you authority. I'll give you things that no man will know. And you will raise sons raise daughters. You will raise breeds like you. And those that will believe your ministry will tap this harvest that was already prepared from the beginning. The moment you step in this land, you don't need prayer. It's a fertile ground. The harvest is already ready. It is up to you whether to eat or to leave it. I want to speak to every member and every daughter, every son of Holy Ghost Embassy. When the Lord was brought me here to South Africa, I did not have a house. I did not come here with a suit. I did not come here with a suitcase. I came here without anything. And the Lord says, I will show you that I have called you. I will provide people. I will lift up ravens and they will feed you. What I've gone through for the sake of this calling is dangerous. Persecution, trial, temptations, prison, cells, gossiping for the sake of Jesus. And for the sake of this gospel, I am ready to die. For the sake of this gospel, I am ready to die, to be crucified. For the sake of my Jesus. He called me and he said, no man will be able to believe you. No one will believe you. What you speak, no man will be able to believe you. But later, I will show forth my glory. I will release angels, a region of angels to protect you. I'm not protected by guns. I'm not protected by cars. I am protected by God. I'm not kept by man. I'm kept by God. No man will boast that where we are, Holy Ghost Embassy, is because of his help. This is the help of God. It is. I want to 
speak to you. That the one that you are speaking against is a prophet. And because he's a prophet, he was sent for you to profit. He that receiveth a prophet. In the name of the prophet, he will receive a prophet's reward. I was not sent to fight you. I was sent to save you. The Lord says, be careful of the words that you speak about his servant. Be careful. May God guide your mouth. Don't find yourself in the traps of the enemy. Run away. Sometimes I cry if I look at what the Lord shows me about people. That's the reason you see even Moses reached a point where he said, God, should I kill these people? Should I kill them? He had all the ability to do that. But God said, hold on. Hold on. I have a plan for them. Prophets are a gift. People are a gift to prophets. You are a gift to me. And I'm a gift to you. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Because the one you are trying to kill Keep me in your prayers. Keep me in everything that you do. And I will keep you in my prayer. Whenever you begin to see me as a gift to you, you begin to appreciate me. Even the little I have done for you. Even the little I have done for you, you will see to be great. Appreciate gifts. Appreciate one another in the church. The Lord did not give me a church of a rebellious church. He gave me a loving church. I'm a loving man of God. This is who I am. I'm a loving man of God. I talk to everybody. Everyone to me is a blessing. Don't put pain in your father. Put joy. past two months I've been crying. I've been crying. And the Lord says, your cry have reached me. You have reached me. I've been crying. I've been crying. I think he knows that. Huh? I've been crying. I've been crying. I've been crying. Lord, why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? And the Lord says, just tell the people that you are a gift. I gave them as a gift. Tell them, I gave them as a gift. Should I go? Should I go to another country? a prophet, you will leave. You will leave. If you don't dress him, you don't keep him, you will leave. And when he leaves, some of you will go back to drinking. You will go back to drinking. You will go back to your lifestyle. When they crucified Jesus, the Bible said Peter went back to catch fish. That's not my prayer for you. I'm praying that you must go forward. This is my prayer. 
This is my greatest prayer that you must go forward. I pray for the spirit of loyalty. I pray for the spirit of loyalty. In the name of Jesus. I pray for the spirit. Of discernment over your life. In the name of Jesus. Listen, child of God. Keep. Keep me. Don't kill me. Keep me. Don't kill me. I've never done anything wrong to you. Keep me. Don't break me. Build me. If you can't build me, at least encourage me. If you can't encourage me, pray for me. If you can't pray for me, then speak good about me can't speak good about me. Then, I don't know. I know that I'm a gift to you. I know. I know. I know I'm a gift. And very soon, the gift is about I see it. I see it. A few days from now, my wife, don't worry. The Lord called me. The day I will fail. God did not call me. Don't worry. He called me. Just pray for me. This is my battle. It's not your battle. I know you are a greatest intercessor. Just pray for me. I was telling her that uh, this year, to you is a year of grace, great, uh, uh, great grace. For me, is a year of persecution, trial, prison. The Lord spoke to me that, and the Lord says He will release angels that will protect me. They will keep me. They will search, look from the right, check for mistakes. Sons will plant traps for me, but the Lord will begin to remove them one by one, one by one. This year, I've gone through rebellion. I had a son of mine that I raised. He was here. He was here. He was staying in church. He was staying in church. I raised him. I sent him to his branch. And after I sent him to his branch, he rebelled. I was told three weeks ago he took chairs from the church. He stole chairs from the church. Took all the members. A church that had 1,600 members. It remained with 35. 35. I did not mention, I did not speak anything. Not even one day with my lips. All the members changed the whole the church account, changed it. The money he was child, he was putting it in his own account. The money of the church, putting it in his own account. The one I raised, the one I groomed, no calling, no calling. He did not have even a calling. I imparted him. Now he's, he's against me. How do you feel in your heart? Okay, physically, how do you feel? Huh? It's painful to raise. But at the end of it, sons begin to have a sword. They want to kill you. They want to kill you. What have you done? Is it a problem to raise? Is the problem to impart? Is the problem to raise people like me? He stood against me. He stood against me. He is busy writing funny, funny things. Con connived all, the whole church. 
connived the whole church, making me to be a bad person. I'm the one who sent him there. Give him the office. I give him the office. Rent for him the church house. The church house. Furnished it. Furnished it. And now, I am the enemy. Let's see Jehovah. Let's see. The Bible says when you sow a bad seed, there is a time. We don't respond fast. We don't. I raised a boy. I gave someone, I gave someone to write my book. I said a lady, she was in church. I gave someone to write a book. My book. After I finished writing all the, the whole book, two, two books. I wrote everything. I finished. I said, Can you do editing? She took all the books and ran away. Ran away. After running away, I said, No. That, that prophet is not a prophet. Even me, I'm a prophet. I can't do anything. My wife had to leave the country. And I said, okay. We don't respond with words. I said, woman, because of what you have done, because you have made me cry, your house will break. It did not take three weeks. The house broke. They are separate now. Never provoke a prophet. Never. Let a prophet be happy with you every time. Never. I said, woman, because of what you have done, your house will break in two. No man, no man of God will, be, will ever restore it. You have sinned against the whole host of heaven. And now as I'm telling you, things are bad. I was in Lusaka. I was in Lusaka. The man came to kneel down. He knelt down. He said, Papa, pray for me. From that day, things are bad. I lost my car. I lost my house. My, my whole family is broken. I said, why did you do that? Why did you reach a level? You have been close to me. Why did you reach a level of provoking my spirit? Why? Why must, of all people, why must you test me? It's like a man carrying a gun and you're busy doing like this. There is so much power and authority. The moment I said you can never die. Even a witch from your family if they come today. This anointing will still protect you. There are battles I receive for the sake of you. And I say it. Of what, what did you do this? And I prayed for him. The same week his car was released. Why is it like that? The Lord has a plan for you. It's not the plan to destroy you. It's a plan of prosperity. Do you think when you're going through a problem, do you think I'm happy? Or I must begin to be happy? No, 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 no. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Rise up on your feet. When the ark stand up. When people are carrying the ark. When people are carrying the ark. They don't feel the heaviness. Until they drop it.
carry me to the end. Don't drop me. Don't break me. Let it not be like David and, and, and Absalom. You are not the Absalom. Just make it in your mind. Just make it in your mind that I'm the least, I'll be the last person to rebel against this man. It must be in your mind. I have never rebelled. I have never rebelled. I have never, I've never, I've never started my church on someone's members. I've never. Not even one day. I've never. That's the reason I believe if God was supposed to deal with me, you're supposed to deal with me a long time. But all this time, the Lord has been good to me. It's been good. Tonight, I wanted to pray. Lord, help me to keep my family. Help me to keep myself. Help me to keep my finances. Help me to dress everyone around me. Help me to dress everything that you have given me. Lift your hands right now wherever you are and fire the prayer. Lift your hands. Come on. Lift your hands. Pray, pray, pray. Pray. I want to hear your voice. Pray. Declare, 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 declare. Declare. Lord, I lift my hands in worship as I praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship as I praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no like you there is no one else like you thank you Jesus pray pray wherever you are lift your hands pray 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 for the spirit of loyalty pray for the spirit of loyalty wherever you are just lift your hands and pray for the spirit of loyalty pray for the spirit of loyalty Pray for the spirit of loyalty. Pray for the spirit of loyalty. Makarato soprakia do sovrakia do venesia. Mas soprahateve. Jacarados. 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 Makora parika tu sapa. Lift your hands. Pray. 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 That you will keep your children. You will dress your children. You will keep your finances and you will dress your finances. Lift your hands and pray. Pray, 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 pray. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship as I praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship as I praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no like you there is no one else like you oh Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus find somebody find a partner find a partner hold hands hold hands find a partner find a partner Find a partner. Just hold hands. Hold hands. Hold hands. Your both hands. Your both hands. Your both hands. Find somebody to hold hands. Listen to me. I want you to tell God that God, 
I vow to keep and to dress everything that you bring my way in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to keep and to dress anything that comes my way. Lift your voice and pray for one another. Pray for one another. Then sings my soul my Savior God to thee. How great the world. How great the world. That sings my soul. My Savior God to thee. How great the world. How great the world oh, that sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee. How great the world, how great the world oh, that sings my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great the world, how great the world, oh, that sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great the world. the spirit that sees my soul my soul my son your God to thee how great thou art how great thou art that sees my soul that sees my soul my son your God How great the world, how great the world, then sees my soul, my Savior, God to me. How great the world, how great the world. God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great, how great, how great, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great. How great the world, 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 great the world, how great, how great, how great the world, how great the world, how great the world.
pray for your families. Pray for your families. Pray for your business. Pray for your church. Pray for your spiritual father. Just pray. Pray, 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 pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see the Spirit of God moving. Just pray. Pray. Pray, pray. Are you Lord? Yeah, that's angels bow. Let the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you Lord. Let the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Everybody say, Holy. Worship you now, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord, holy, holy, God Almighty, wars and is and is to come. Seats upon the throne. Holy once again. Holy, holy God Almighty. Wars at ease and ease to come. Oh, the Seats upon the throne to the land. Who seats upon the throne? Lift your hands wherever you are. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Just thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him with your mouth. Thank Him with your mouth. Tell him how much you love him. Thank him with your mouth. Thank him with your mouth. Open your mouth and tell him. Thank him with your mouth. Tell him, Lord, thank you for my family. Thank you for everybody around me. Thank you for reviving me. Come on. To the land who sits upon the throne. To the land. To the land. Who 
seats upon the throne to the Lamb who seats upon the throne to the Lamb who seats upon the throne to the Lamb who seats upon the throne thank you Jesus as your hands are lifted Father I thank you say amen Father I thank you shout it like you believe it Father I thank you for everybody thank you for my sons and daughters amen in the name of Jesus amen I pronounce a blessing over their lives. Amen. I pronounce a blessing over their hands. Amen. I pronounce a blessing over their businesses. Amen. I pronounce a blessing upon their children. Amen. I pronounce a blessing upon their ministries. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pronounce a blessing on their financial status. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As their spiritual father, I bless them. Amen. I bless their coming in. Amen. I bless their going out. Amen. I bless their children. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight you shall sleep like a baby. Amen. And you shall wake up like a lion. Amen. No more demonic nightmares. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No more losing finances. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus, whatever you are. Come on. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. God bless you. All those that are watching on Facebook. This coming Sunday we have a service called Manto Service. And I want to invite you, this service is going to be massive. I have a general who is coming, Apostle Joshua Talena. is going to be here with me this coming Sunday. And I promise you, the backbone of the devil is going to be broken. This is a service called Manto Service. Come with your mantle. And I promise you, you will never regret. May the Lord bless you. See you this coming Sunday. Shalom, shalom. Put your two hands for Jesus. Take your seats, take your seats, take your seats.